G'day legends, g'day superstars, I am a football tipping god, yes, gather around last week, I happened to pick 9 winners, and that means I am in sensational form, heading into round 5 of the AFL, and it's all kicking off, this Thursday at the MCG, the Melbourne Demons versus the Brisbane Lions, it is an epic encounter to kick this round off, Brisbane had a really soft kill last week against North Melbourne. Demolished them. Didn't even play against a back line. The D's had a tough one against the Adelaide Crows. Their second win in five days. Back on their home deck after a seven-day rest. And I'm pretty much tipping my boys, the Demons, to take this one out. Judd McVie was sensational last week. Petrarca was amazing. They're getting lots of speed through the middle of the ground. They're going to miss Cozzy Pickett. Let's be honest, that is a big takeout for the D's. But the Brisbane Lions did get back into some form. Danaher and Hipwell kicked nine between them, but they're not going to have it that easy against the great man, McDonald, the magnificent Stephen, the Terminator, May. And don't remember, the old Jakey Lee as well. So I'm going with the D's to take that one out in a very close game. It's going to be no more than three goals, but I would not be surprised. Would not be surprised if the D's turn this one into an absolute slaughter on their home deck and just put a little bit of a chink into the polished armour that was the Brisbane Lions last week. Kicking on to a Friday game, heading down to Marvell Stadium. The Western Bulldogs versus the Essendon Bombers, 7.40pm. The Doggies, very stiff to lose to the Geelong Cats and the Bombers were woeful. Putrid against Port Adelaide. The Essendon edge is blunt, it's folded. I don't know what to make of this mob. Uh, without Peter Wright, they can't score. They don't defend. They're all one paced. And when you're playing against the dogs who love playing on fast decks, who are moving the ball beautifully at the moment, led by the Bont, led by Libba, little weighty down the front there. And don't forget Sam Darcy kicking three last week. They are going to be way too strong for the Bombers. I've even had Essendon supporters getting to us on the podcast last night saying they are absolutely no chance to win this. And they will slice and dice them like Iron Chef Chen Kenichi on a beautifully poached foie gras Iron Chef style. Six goals minimum by the Doggies. All right, heading into Super Saturday. This is going to be a nice little tasty one to kick off the weekend. It is the GWS Giants versus the Saints. 1.45 p.m. at Marnacle Overfall in Canberra. GWS have done absolutely everything they possibly can to be staying on top of the ladder. Undefeated at the moment. The Saints, geez, didn't they cop a scare last week from Richmond? But here's the thing. I think with St. Kilda, they're either really, really on, or if they're off by a little bit, it really takes its toll. And we saw that last week. They got jumped at the start by Richmond, but they were able to work their way back into the game. GWS aren't going to uh, allow them to do that. If GWS get hold of you, it's going to be really, really difficult. Everyone from start to finish, back line to forward line, have been magnificent so far, the GWS. And I'm looking at this one to probably be maybe a four or five goal win to the, the Giants. And it's simply because when you've got Hogan on fire, uh, Toby Green is going to be playing. We thought he might have been suspended, but he hasn't. He got off with that sling tackle. you got Sam Taylor down back. Canelio's playing great football. Callum Brown's running through the middle. Uh, Tom Green, I could keep going on and on and on. They are absolutely purring at the right time. Playing at Marnacle. They love playing up there in Canberra. And they're going to take this one out, like I said, about by five or six goals. It isn't the, uh, the be-all and end-all for St. Kilda. I just think when you're playing against a club that is just doing everything right, these are the ones that you have to swallow, take a step back, and then move on to the week after. All right, Carlton versus Adelaide. This one's going to be really simple. Carlton will dominate this one because we know it is going to be at Marvel Stadium 4.35 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Adelaide, they cannot move the ball. They can't score. They're only about seven or eight points more than the West Coast Eagles. That's how bad the number one scoring team from the previous year are going. And so that's why I'm going, Carlton. They are just purring along nicely. Once again, undefeated. Um, and on that home fast deck, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous for Mackay and Kerno. The Twin Towers, you can't beat them. And when you've got Reedering up the other end, Chera through the middle, you've got Pittenet playing fantastic football. When you've got Cottrell playing great football, when you've got Carlton playing great football, it's going to be hard to get past them. Uh, this could be a five or six goal. This could actually get really ugly. Because if Taylor Walker does not kick a score, Adelaide don't win. It's as simple as that. They're just not enough goal kickers and not enough players who work hard enough to keep them in the game long enough. So I think Carlton will do this one. In a canner, five, six goals, probably even more if, if everything goes to plan uh, and just put more misery on Matthew Nix and his team for season 2024. All right, game after that, we are looking at the Gold Coast Suns versus the Hawthorne Hawks, 
at Gold Coast, aka People First Stadium, 7.30 p.m. Gold Coast will win this one. Hawthorne were pretty good, let's be honest. They were actually not too bad. An extra five or so minutes, they would have beaten Collingwood last week. But Gold Coast, I think they showed that the Dimmer Harwick effect is real. It's in play. He's willing to play the kids. They were really good last week. They led really well from the front. David Swallow, Wits, Rao, Anderson. I've spoken about these guys week in, week out. You got Walter down forward. You got King down forward. Uh, you got Collins down back. They they are in a really good spot, and they should take. These are the games that Gold Coast have to win and have to win really, really well. Hawthorne, Hardwick was a great move down forward last week, kicking four. Ginevan's doing his part. Charles doing their part. They're working through the midfield okay. Sicily and Frost are right down back as well too, but I think just Gold Coast at home. It's going to be probably a little bit hot up there, slippery conditions. They deserve and they, they play in that weather a hell of a lot better. Most other teams, and they're going to win this one quite easily. I reckon maybe five or six goals to Gold Coast Suns for that one. At the same time, which I reckon is probably the game of the weekend, and is going to be the Port Adelaide Power versus the Fremantle Dockers, 7.30 p.m. at the Adelaide Oval. A Frio the real deal. We will find out after this game. Frio were really good last week, let's be honest. They were really poor in the last couple of minutes, not playing out the game with that two-minute warning as most clubs actually prepare for. Uh, they let Carlton back into the game and lost it. They're going to have to be a little bit smarter. They're going to have to be a little bit more controlled in the way that they express themselves. Descent is going to be looked on by the Fremantle Dockers, but they've been playing great footy, let's be honest. They've been getting some really nice run out of their midfield. Their forwards are presenting themselves as well too. Jackson's been an absolute star, which we knew he was going to be. He's having a really nice breakout solo season. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when Sean Darcy comes back. But Port Adelaide, they took Essendon to the sword last week. And when you got Rosie Butters and also Horn Francis in the middle, that is a dominating um, centerpiece that you have to set up against. Soldo can put it down the front. You got Alia, Alia, you got Radagalia down back, Dixon up forward. Uh, they got so many options across the ground. I think they are a massive chance to win this. And I reckon this will be um, not as close as people think. I think Port Adelaide could get this one by about four or five goals, to be honest. Um, I just think that they play that game, that ground really, really well. And this will be a statement game for Ken Hinckley's men. If they can take out Fremantle, they can prove that they are the real deal. And just even having Georgiades down there adds that flexibility of being able to fly for marks, but also um, having that nimbleness around the bottom of the packs as well too. So I'm definitely going with Port Adelaide to take that one out and give Fremantle uh, a loss for season 2024. All right, let's get on to the Sunday games. We're going to whip through these because they are... Pretty average, let's be honest. Geelong versus North Melbourne at uh, GMHBA Stadium. How far to Geelong? As long as they get it past the half uh, back line of North Melbourne, they, they're going to kick a score. When you got Hawkins, when you got Cameron, when you got Myers, when you got Close, when you got uh, Stengel, they are going to be party mode. And this could get a little ugly. We saw what Brisbane did to North Melbourne last week. What about when you got massiveness down in the forward line? Geelong's home deck, packed up Cat Stadium. It's a nightmare waiting to happen. They'll win this by about 60, 70 points, I reckon, Geelong, and really put a statement on the AFL to say that, hey, we are back, and we are back in a big, big way. All right, West Coast Eagles versus Richmond is the last game of the weekend. Hey, West Coast were pretty good last week. This one is at 4 p.m. our time, just because of, obviously, the time difference, back with daylight savings. They're playing Richmond. Richmond were pretty good last week, and also West Coast were pretty good last week as well, too. This is actually a potential for upset alert, and I reckon I'm going to go with it. Yes, I'm going to go and put my agates on the chopping block here. I don't think anybody else has got the, uh, the testicular fortitude to say this, but I reckon West Coast are going to get their first win of the season. Harley Reid was immense. And if he can carry this team on their back, on their home deck, with 45 to 50,000 feral West Coast supporters cheering them on, there is no reason beyond a doubt that they can't win this one. Shy Bolton, magnificent. Dusty Martin rolling through as also. Well. They've got some young kids also coming through as well, Richmond. But I just think the second week of travelling in a row, it's the longest road trip and footy to get over to Perth. They will be absolutely penciling this one in West Coast. And I'm going by less than a goal for them to get their first win of season 2024 and get off the bottom of the AFL ladder. So there you go, trendsetters. That's the tips for round five of the AFL. Like I said last week, I tipped nine. There's two teams who've got the buy this week. That is Sydney, that is Collingwood. So we've only got eight games. Stay tuned. It is going to be an absolute corker of a week. I'm Peps. That's tipped out. And it's how you want your tips.